my nightmare! No, I'm kidding, everybody. This is Radio Tokyo. Uh, it's Wednesday, November 16th, 2016. And, well, I was going to say this is Radio Tokyo like I normally would, but I, I, I kind of started out that way. Wow. Anyway, um, we've missed like two weeks because Nick has been rebuilding his robot body again for the third time this year. And we've just missed all kind of things to talk about. So this may be kind of a longer show, but, you know, what are we going to do about it other than say, Hi Nick, how are you? How's the new robot body? Well, I'm not a robot. Hello everyone. Also, robots usually require lots of maintenance, so three times a year isn't really that unreasonable. Um, I'm doing pretty well though. How how are you doing? Do I have to honestly answer this question? Yes, you do. Can I just avoid answering this question and everything be perfectly okay? The whole point of the show is to honestly answer questions. Well, since I'm going to... Okay, first off, I want to admit, we were wrong. Nick, you and I were wrong about something. We've been wrong the past year. Every time we've talked about this particular subject, we were wrong. We were hugely wrong. We were well, wrong. in my defense, I was more we right wrong. than you. We were on wrong the, uh, big league. The prediction. We were wrong big league. I, in, in my defense, I was more right than you on the predictions. Actually, when I looked at the electoral map, I honestly was going to pick Donald Trump to win. Um, I kind of just picked Hillary out of wanting Hillary to win. I, I, I didn't predict Donald Trump would win by as big a margin as he did, but I was actually going to give New Hampshire to Donald Trump, and if you look at my map, that actually would have pushed him over the top. Well, okay, I, I've, I've actually got the final uh, version of the Electoral College map from that I'm I'm still not convinced this is not some dream, uh, but no, I, I had the final map up, and I, it's I'll be honest, uh, you know, election night, I had been actually all day election day, uh, I had been uh, doing poll working, I I was busy, uh, getting, make, making sure our democracy functions. I came home, and we were going to do you know like the live stream thing, talk about it, but you couldn't do it, and that's fine, it's understandable. I'll be honest, after about a half hour or so of trying to keep up with what was happening, I gave up. Now, uh, my excuse would be that, I think, I think I said this, my excuse was that uh, uh, my computer just couldn't handle live streaming to three different things at once. And the truth is, I was doing just fine. I just couldn't fucking believe what was happening, and I could no longer re retain my composure. So I'll be honest with all of you, I was wrong. Nick, you were wrong. I, I, I know you and I thought Hillary was going to win ultimately, but the reality was the Electoral College has actually worked for the second time in our lifetime. This is, uh, I think, the third or fourth time that we have had uh, the Electoral I College actually work the, the way to get a president elected. I, I think it's the third time. No, it's second. Uh, uh, and, uh, the the first time would be well, Bush. The second time was this. No, I, I think there is one other time before this. I, I have to look it up, but I, I believe it's the third time this has happened in the country. Well, actually, now that, now that I think about it, uh, it's it's possible that we. No, no, wait. There is a third time. I didn't realize it until today. Uh, do you remember which one it was? Cause I'm, yes, I'm actually I do. It was four it. fucking years ago, and the way I know it was four years ago is because our president-elect got on Twitter to bitch about something at 8.45 p.m. his local time. 
November 6, 2012. The Electoral College is a disaster for democracy. That was election night 2012 when Obama lost the popular vote but won through the Electoral College. Yes, friends, your future president says dumb shit on Twitter. It's not something new. He's been doing it for a long time. In fact, there is a long list of tweets that he gave, that he made that night that has since been deleted. But as we all know, once something is on the internet, it never, ever, ever goes away. So let me just read to you these, Actually, the, the, wait, these wait, wonderful wait, wait. tweets. Wait, hold on, hold on. Before you get into that, though, um, I don't think Obama lost the popular vote that year. Also, this has actually happened four times in the past, um, not including the maybe Obama, but I'm pretty sure Obama won the popular vote. This happened in 1824 when John Quincy Adams won, despite not winning the popular vote or the electoral vote. In 1876, Rutherford B. Hayes won uh, the electoral vote but lost the popular vote. In 1888, Benjamin Harrison, uh, he lost the popular vote even the uh, he also won the electoral vote technically, but he didn't get to 270. And then we have George Bush, who, as we all know, won the electoral vote. Lost popular vote. So this would mark the fifth time that a president either did not win the electoral vote of 270 or lost the popular vote. Which is what I said. This is the second time within our lifetime. Unless you want to add in, uh, you know, the Twitter rampage of our president-elect in 2012. Which I'm going to I'm really because because well, here, here's, here, here, hang, hang on hang on here's the thing here's the thing uh, one of my favorite quotes of in fact I'm I'm not even going to read the tweets but I'm not, I'm not going to read the rest of them because I'll just get angrier and angrier and angrier in fact if you want to know what they said go watch uh, GQ's it's not it's no longer the closer it's now the resistance but it's Keith Olbermann's uh, program he just posted it this morning uh, he t he even talks about it, okay uh, the reality is. That one of my favorite quotes is, the arc of history is long, and yes, it is. Like I said, once something is on the internet, it's there forever. This shit's there. Look back at it. History is an actual thing. There's a reason people keep records of things, because you can go back and say, oh, look, that's what happens. And that's my concern. That is my actual concern about uh, President-elect Donald Trump having 270 electoral college votes. Now, here's the thing. The EC works. And, uh, the EC works. Uh, Obama the did works. win the popular vote. Obama uh, did win whatever, the popular whatever. vote. Whatever. Anyway, the EC worked. It actually worked. Uh, the election was not rigged. It worked the way it's intended. Okay? And the reason it worked the way it intended is because of the Electoral College. Now, that's terrifying uh, because the other night, in fact, um, I went to a friend's birthday party. Okay? Uh, this is an older friend. He's, he actually turned 71. Happy birthday! Anyway, um, and then there was like a free concert type playing uptown, and I went to that, you know, listen to music, and I ran into an old teacher friend of mine, this man, uh, retired Navy veteran, you know, he's now a teacher, uh, he teaches history and government, and he asked me what I thought about the election, because history and government was one of my, uh, better classes all through school, in fact, it's still... Something I still do now because I've talked about before. I Who ran for public office. Who would have guessed? I don't know. But anyway, uh, he asked me what I thought about this, like what I thought about the election. I said, "Do you want my truthful answer?" He says, "Yes." And I said, "The electoral college has worked to put a fascist in office." And he laughed. He laughed not at me, but with me because we were both laughing at it. An actual historian has admitted this. Uh, uh, Slavoj Zizek, a uh, Ukrainian, uh, not not Ukrainian. Uh, yeah, no, he is. I don't, anyway, he's a philosopher. Big Think asked him about this, and he says yes. He's he's he, he's a demi fascist. Okay, he's not, he's not a true fascist, but Trump is a demi fascist. Like he has all of the hallmarks. Like like for example, if you look at the fourteen points of fascism, which I would bring up and go through, but I would rather in someone else on their own go look at it. Trump gets a check marked by everyone, okay? 
this is not a he, now again he's not a true fascist but he is definitely the closest thing we've ever had in office to a fascist in our country that i can certainly well, think of but 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 here's uh, the interesting here's the interesting well, just, hang on one second just, let, let me let me say one thing one thing one thing Adolf Hitler does not get a check mark by all the 14 points of fascism. What does that tell you? Oh, it's disturbing, certainly. Um, I, I honestly find this election really interesting as probably, I don't know, the second biggest test of America's uh, institutions and system. Um, I, as much as I hate Donald Trump and think he's an idiot and going to ruin the country in various ways, I don't really find him think he's going to try to take over the country and become emperor of America. I, 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 I just don't see that as in his personality. But I do see it as an interesting, uh, from a historical perspective, test of the checks and balances that we've put into government. And because I, I really don't think him and the Republican Congress are going to get along. I, it's going to be one of the weirdest uh, times in American history where a, po a political party holds every single piece of power it needs almost, yet I'm not sure they're going to be able to get much done. Like... I, I, I really don't think they're going to be able to get much done because as, we, as we've discussed before, Donald Trump is far more liberal than the Republican Party that supported him. And, and it, it, it's, it's just really weird. It, like, is, it, I, it, it, it is weird, think, especially if you look the past couple of days. Cause, I mean, I, I, I mean, like what we, we, we are what a grand total of. We're like, what, eight days away oh. from elections? And if you... Yeah. Yeah, really, okay, think about this, okay. Starting on... No, oh, God, okay. I can't believe I'm going to say this. Okay. I'm looking forward to the next four years. I'm, I, I'm no longer afraid, because going into it, I'm like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. This man literally means everything that he's saying, okay? But now that we, you know, we're like eight days out, I don't think he does. And and I'm like, I, I never like he did. the closer I, it I, is it, to January, the closer we get to the shit, the more I realize the the in, in like in my head, I I I kind of think he said this stuff just to be saying it. I really think that he played yeah. the American people like a harp from hell to steal a line from Batman. Um but it's it's still fucking terrifying to think I, that that's it, what it, he's done. It's terrifying. It, it's one of the well, I've never believed almost all the things that he said. I, I I'm sure on some points he was more serious, or he meant some of the things. I I'm sure he's still a bully and did make fun of all those people. Um, I, I have no doubts about that. But as far as actually building a wall, repealing Obamacare, uh, even tracking people of Muslim, uh, uh, Muslim immigrants or Muslim people part of the Islamic religion, I'm not sure he meant any of that. Oh, so here's the and, thing. Here, here's the thing. The announcement was made today that his that his transition team was already working on building the wall they're already working on it okay um wow now, now, now here's the thing here's the thing the, the only reason i'm the only reason i'm bringing this up is because nothing is impossible 
Uh, it was never believed no. that Adolf Hitler would be a threat to Germany or Europe or the world, and Neville Chamberlain was wrong. He was wrong. Like it's it's the first time a British prim prime minister ever resigned in absolute disgrace because they failed so miserably at their job. He was wrong. Uh, people yeah. didn't think it was happening. Okay, uh, we didn't think that uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis would ever go wrong, but there was a complete and total failure there because someone couldn't tell time and do math. I mean, like, all these things in history, you think, well, that could never happen. Okay, ask the 6 million Jews who are dead if they thought it would ever happen. Ask the 6 million other people that Hitler killed if they ever thought it would happen. Ask the people that are in Laos and Vietnam and China, Russia, uh, and in fact, ask the Native Americans whether they thought it would ever happen. All these things that have happened, I, no one said, it will never happen. Surprisingly, we had, like, landing on the moon. We did that, too. I, All It's 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 I, terrifying. I, well, I, I did expect Donald Trump to do well. I thought Hillary would still win. I wanted her to win. However, I didn't discount Donald Trump to be to the effect that other people did, mostly because the country is angry, and when you're angry, you lash out, and what better way to lash out uh, against the country than to elect an anti-establishment candidate? Now, whether you want to argue whether he's actually anti-establishment or not, that's a whole different issue. But the fact of the matter is, he presented himself as an anti-establishment candidate. And he was going against, perhaps, the most establishment candidate that any political party has ever put up for office. I can there think is, of no like, one that re represents the establishment more than Hillary Clinton. There, there, there is no other candidate. I mean, seriously. No other candidate has ever, and, okay, I'm going to go and explain my vote here, and the reason I'm going to explain it is because I'm saying it live, okay, you, Nick, you can hear me, anyone else watching can hear me live, I'm, I, I'm not going to take this video down, I mean, like, until the heat death of the universe happens and everything's destroyed, even after that, this message would be there. I voted for Hillary Clinton. I voted for her. For Four. I wanted her to win. It was not a vote against Donald Trump. It was not a vote against America. It was not a vote against democracy. It was a vote for Hillary Clinton to win. In the past year, you know this, Nick, I have done nothing but be raped. This steel-encased bitch, because every, she represents everything that's wrong. Yes, I called her a bitch. What are you going to do about it? I've talked, I've talked openly about voting for Bernie because I want to see change. I want to see progress in the United States and getting it under any Republican or any Democrat. So hopefully uh, Donald Trump will set things on fire and we'll have a change. I'll be okay with that if, if he actually keeps his word in that extent. And I'll get into later why he won't or why I think he won't. But I voted for her. Because I fully, I'm, I'm 100, hang on, I fully expected the system to work. And guess what? I was vindicated. The system worked. It actually worked. It blocked her. Now, I was expecting her to win and to have four, four years, maybe eight years. No, no. In fact, I would bet you money. I would have bet you every last dime that I've ever had in my possession my entire life that she would have gone out after four years because we have an obstructionist Congress that has done nothing nothing but block our president at every possible turn Now, granted uh, he's had some successes like Obamacare but they have blocked him wherever and whenever and however possible so a Congress that hates this woman a population that hates this woman uh, every like everyone hates her because they realize that she is the establishment. She is the living embodiment of the establishment. She is the last actual 
uh, politician in office that I'm aware of who came out of Cold War policies. This is the death knell for the Reagan era politics is her. This is the end of it. No more Clintons unless Chelsea decides to run. God, if you're there. <sighs> anyway, I expected her to be blocked for four years, and I was okay with that. Her losing, believe it or not, actually makes me happy. For all the problems that I have with Trump, it turns out I was right. The system blocked her. So, for as wrong as we were, we're both still <laughs> technically right. We both expected her to be stopped, and she's been stopped. So, release the Kraken. I don't know what the fuck we do now. We watch the country burn and hope it doesn't burn so badly that we can't fix it. However, I have faith in America and do think we will eventually be able to fix it. But my god, is it going to burn. My god, is it going to burn. I mean, and uh, this is the problem with presidents like Reagan and potentially Trump. Their plans work in the short term. Their plans do amazing, great things in the short term. The problem is 10, 15, 20 years down the line, they do almost irreparable harm that will be felt for generations and might not be able to be fixed. It's, it's, I, I, I'm trying to think of a good example. Um, um, Nick, uh, okay, Nick, you're going to have, it, it's like buying, it's like buying a house. Of examples. I, I would like, okay, like, like, you mentioned the things burning and like a good burn, and I have a good burn for you, Nick. I have an amazing burn for you. Okay. I didn't tell you about this, and again, this is because I can put this on the internet and be there forever. The past couple of days, I have been on an emotional roller coaster, like, and I, I'm not talking like a fun one. It's been, a, it's been, a, it's been a, a, a wonderfully uh, bad one. Anyway, I, I befriended this pink-haired bitch. This is the second time I've called a woman a bitch today. What's wrong with me? Anyway, um. Wait, wait, are you still friends, or did you... No, are you no, uh, we are decidedly not friends. In fact, we were, um, I would have eloped with this girl. Seriously, I mean, it, 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 it's very rare for me to meet, now, now, I joke all the time about finding someone and saying I'm in love with this person, but this person, uh, somehow managed to just pull every string out of my heart and, like, make a rope out of it. You know, wait, I think, and did, wait, did you show me her? Probably, yes, and I, I did, I did, I, yes, I did. I, you, okay. you had seen I, the I cotton candy girl. Now. I remember her. Yes, yes, you had seen the cotton candy girl. Um, like I said, she she made a rope out of my heartstrings and then hung me with it. Um, actually, well. not her, her husband. As it turns out, this uh twenty six year old beautiful girl. I'm, I'm not gonna mention your name. Yes, her eyes are on screen right now, so I can look directly into them as I say this. Fuck you. Okay, fuck you. I, I, I sincerely hope that your marriage collapses because of your stupidity. Fuck you. Um, and I, I would normally, under most circumstances, never say this, but again, she's married. She's part of a singles group. She's hitting it off with me, wanting, like, like hinting that she wants to run off and everything. So fuck you. No. Uh, you're not going to pull me into marital infidelity because because you're unhappy with your husband. Get a divorce. Okay, here's the reality. These two have been together for 10 years. Uh, she, like I said, she's 26. They've been there since high school. Long time. Married for 8 years, have 3 kids, and now she's trying to find someone to run off with. And I find out from her husband, who I feel, em like, I feel immensely sorry for her husband. Because this is not the first time she's done this. So, uh, I've been very, very, very upset the past couple of days over this. Because it actually hurt. I mean, like, really, generally, deep down, managed to hurt me that 
uh, this would happen because I mean it was just like we had known one another forever. We liked everything in common. We got along, exact same sense of humor. You know all these wonderful happy things that I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna marry you yesterday. You know, like if there if there was no distance there, we would have been married yesterday. You know, like that kind of connection. And I can hurt. relate, and I think you know who I can relate with, even though you warned me about her. I I probably had some ideas. I probably had some ideas, but like it 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 really hurt me. So Cotton Candy Girl, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you in the yeah. ass with your own dick. Okay, I'll I'll just be that crude. But no, really, I actually got my revenge on Cotton Candy Girl. Um, oh, it's beautiful. See, it's beautiful. I made a post, a lengthy post, in the Facebook group where we met. And I said, about a year ago, there was a problem with people in the group who were not single. Because it's a group for people who are single, you know? Uh, there's people in there who, who are with somebody, but most of them happen to be the admins. And they met someone in the group, and they're dating the person in the group. Okay? That's fine. Whatever. You're an admin. You're not there looking to hook up. You're not looking there to find your significant other. You know, you've gotten together with someone. You're happy. You understand that? Move the fuck on. But no, the problem is people who are not single join the group. So I made a post about it. And then I contacted the admins, whom I happen to be friends with, and uh, explained to them what was going on. So they kicked the bitch out of the group. Not only kicked her out, but they completely banned her. Banned her. Like, she's on the ban list. She can't join this group again. It's wonderful. And I realize that that's, you know, kind of a mean thing to do. But, you know what? Stringing someone along and telling them that you like them, that you, I mean, just playing with someone's life that way, that's even meaner. So, anyway, I'm going to shut up. Just, whatever. Fuck you, Cotton Candy. Hey. I, I, I will reach out over the internet now and give you a manly hug. No. Too bad. I already did it. No, no hugs. It, it's already done. Hugs are for... It's been recorded on, Hugs are on the for internet. millennials, goddammit. Hugs are for millennials. You know uh, what? You know what? You know what? That's the problem. That's the problem. She's bad. a millennial. Is she really? She's not that much younger than me. Yeah. I mean, I'm 30. She's a millennial. So. You're a millennial too. Am I? When does the millennial generation start? I'm Generation X. That's all I know. And there's people who have argued with me. Well, you're not Generation X. Yes. Yes, I am. Uh, because you see, I, I I I really want to know what year officially millennialism starts. Because I've heard people say it's people born after two thousand. I've heard it's people say it's born in the nineties, and I've heard people say it's born in the late eighties. Nineteen eighty-five was usually the cutoff date for most people. But here's the thing: okay. I turned eighteen in the year two thousand. Okay, now you're saying. Well, you still became an adult in the millennium. No, I didn't, uh, because most people agree they've been agreeing for seven, six, 16 years now. Uh, the millennium started in 2001 because that was the first full year into this. So that's when you, uh, that, that's when the demar demarcation is. Okay, my birthday is in August, so I, so I missed the cutoff date by just a few months. So, I'm I was an adult before the millennium started. Um, but my generation, Generation X, also, you know, none of those people who, uh, are responsible for most of the fuck-ups that the millennials are having to deal with. Wow, it kind of hurts to actually admit that, but, um, no, actually, you no, mean I like think, Donald Trump? I, I, no, you shut mean up, like shut Donald up, Trump? Shut up. Shut up. I think, Nick, I think I'm going to grandfather you into Generation X, but see, here's the reality. I know a lot of people. I, I, I know a lot of people who. I know a lot of people who are in our general age range. Like, well, I'm a millennial. I'm proud to be a millennial, like Ivanka Trump. No, you dumb blonde. No, you're not a millennial. Sorry. Look at your father. You are not a millennial. Sorry. Sorry. Anyway, um, 
the problem is that Gen Xers failed. You know, like the Boomers had their fuck ups. Like they had Woodstock, and they and and they're responsible for Reagan. You know, they're responsible for some serious fuck ups. Uh, but Gen Xers are the ones that looked at our parents and said, "We're not ever going to do that again." You know, we're not going to have the problems that our parents did. Our children will not have to suffer like we did, even though Gen Xers are the ones who had all of the cool shit. I mean, like, think about some of the things that we talk about on the show. Transformers, and G.I. Joe, and My Little Pony, Ghostbusters, like, all of the cool shit comes from us. Yeah. And, 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 and that's why um, all, the, all the remakes and reboots and everything else right now are all stuff that Gen that Gen Xers had because it's our generation. We get to relive our time. In fact, I said this a while back. I don't know. I don't remember how long ago it was. I said this, but uh, remember we, we 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 discussed the reason that all these things are being remade. It's because we lost our fucking innocence on 9/11. So now here it is, 16, you know, 15 years later, almost at 16, but 15 years later, and. Uh, we're, we're having to raise kids in this environment. So, you know, so my generation, our generation, uh, is now having children. And we're like, you know what? We're going to protect them. We don't want this thing to ever happen. That's where safe spaces come from. That's where Tumblr comes from. That's where the modern version of feminism comes from. And that's where this bullshit fucking protesting in the streets and setting shit on fire and hurling rocks and telling the police to go to hell saying fuck Donald Trump and not voting comes from dear millennials, dear millennials, dear beautiful, stupid millennials, you're stupid. I hate you. Your generation needs to die. Well, I won't take it that far. I will. However, I I understand that people are upset about the elections and I, they don't like Donald Trump, and maybe you want to protest, okay, I get it, but honestly, these protests are pointless to me. What is the fucking point? I could see maybe if you were protesting to make it so the popular vote win decides the presidential election instead of the Electoral College, since we've just had that happen two times very fairly recently. I could understand protesting for that. I could understand protesting maybe against certain policies, uh, like building a wall, or, I don't know, trying to document and keep track of all the Muslims, or something of that nature but in general the protests are not about that the protests are simply saying fuck donald trump and that people is pointless it is literally pointless protests are supposed to be about something like the native american protests trying to stop the pipeline from being built that's a protest that actually is trying to accomplish something I support that protest. I say good job to those people, and I encourage them to keep it up. And I really wish the news would cover that story more. But you guys are just standing there looking stupid. I don't know what you're trying to do. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to tell politicians to pay attention to you? Because they're not going to unless you vote. I'm sorry, I had to rant. No, you're fine, but here, here's my thing. Here's my thing. I understand the protests. Okay? They're angry. They're upset. Um, they feel threatened. I get that. But do you know who else felt angry and upset and threatened? Black people 50 years ago. Native American, the, uh, uh, the Standing Rock Sioux tribe you just mentioned, the people at Wounded Knee, everyone else who's ever protested. Uh, in fact, how about uh, 
uh, the baby boomers protesting going to Vietnam. How about our president fucking elect who didn't want to go so much he got five deferments? That's a protest. This is no like it's it's a protest for a reason, you know. Now you can make the argument that people are going to protest things because you know their rights haven't been violated and whatnot. It's all fine and dandy if you believe that, but the reality is, going to the streets, you know, like like it, goddamn, even Colin Kaepernick was protesting for a reason. Okay, he felt there were problems in the United States, so he very peacefully took a knee during the national anthem. That's a protest. I'm okay with that. Uh, but a bunch of high school students and college students, you know, going and standing in the streets and, again, setting things on fire and throwing uh, uh, bricks and stuff at police officers and busting windows, you're, what do you have to be upset over? I mean, like in Portland, for example, uh, there was I thought something like 161... Uh, people arrested like over the weekend, and like I mean, in one night, 160 people arrested and processed, and they of course were all questioned about why they're there. Over half now, I realize 161 is kind of an it's kind of an odd number. You want to aim for a multiple of 100 or multiple of 10 rather before you do this to to do an actual survey. Uh, but well over half of the people that were protested didn't vote. Didn't vote. Didn't even bother. To, to partake in the system because they're all 17 to 25 year olds who don't think that their vote matters. The reality is, the reality is, as angry as you are at the system, as angry as I am at the system, I still voted. I voted. Let that sink in. Everyone oh, who wants oh, to see a change. Oh, I I have an old person story about my journey to vote. Just just to make anyone who didn't vote feel bad. I walked 1.3 miles in near freezing weather to go vote. Now, now let me explain something. I'm in a wheelchair. And not only that, I don't get to get up in my wheelchair that often. And... I was very, very sore while making the journey, and in fact, I had to stop along walking that road to make sure, or because my hand was getting, or hurting, and cold, and tired, and stiffening up, and I walked all the way down that road, which was a fairly busy road for a suburb, and I, 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 I crossed the street. And I went in the school, and I voted, and I tried to warm up a little bit there, and then I walked all the way back home, of which I barely made it home, because it was that hard and that cold. Also, thank you to my little brother for helping me make that journey. But yeah, that was my journey to vote. It took me roughly three hours, I think. Three, two, hours three hours to do something that probably took you no more than 20 seconds, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, now, we talked about one of the last episodes we did before all of this shit started, uh, that people just don't get out and vote. You said that at most it takes them being threatened and you're going to have to have a national holiday. No. 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 No, people. We have two weeks early voting. Two weeks, everyone I have ever known who has ever worked in an election is astounded by the turnout that we've had this year. Okay? There's literally no excuse. If you are 18 years or older in this country, you need to go vote. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about how much you dislike the system. I know a lot of people didn't go vote. And just, just before I even finish this thought, I want to say... To the 18 or 19, maybe 20,000 of you who voted for Harambe the gorilla, go to hell. Go to hell. Okay? It's not funny. Protest votes are not a thing. They're, I'm, I'm sorry, they're not. You don't vote in protest. Even I voted for a candidate for a reason. And you could call it a protest vote if you want to, but the reality was I voted for the candidate. 
because the system works. Guess what? It's not rigged. It actually works for once. Jesus, we've done like, what, 40 minutes so far on the show, and we, we, we've said the system has worked like 19 times, okay? It works. The only way it works is if you vote. Not voting and then going and protesting doesn't matter. Now, unless you want to say like George Carlin did, which is, I guess, makes sense, but here's, but here's the thing. George Carlin was actively involved in the political process, okay? He was actively involved when uh, the baby boomers were at Woodstock and were protesting shit like that, okay? He was involved. He actually did things. His entire 50-some-odd-year career was a protest. Do you get how it works now? He built his career off of protesting injustices. And one of the ways that he didn't, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, remember the phrase that one of the ways that he actually uh, uh, showed his distaste was by not voting. That's him. That's George Carlin. This is the man who was arrested because he used a dirty word. This was the man who was thrown in jail because of language, actually had his First Amendment rights violated. This is not someone who got on Twitter or Facebook or Snapchat or Instagram or anywhere else and said, Oh no, my feelings have been hurt. He was arrested and thrown in jail. Okay? Because he said fuck. Because he said shit. Because he said cunt. Words. Words that your generation wants to reclaim and make their own. <clears throat> He was arrested for it, okay? So he built his career on protesting that system, and he didn't vote. The reason he didn't vote is because he felt that it gave him a right to complain, because the problem is with those who do vote. And he's right. To an extent, George Carlin was right, okay? But the problem is, this year, the younger people, by and large, have turned out to vote. More votes cast this year than in any other election. That's, that's, that's just a fact. But the problem is, if you're going to protest against Donald Trump, a man who, like I said, is a fucking fascist, what are you going to do? Are you going to not vote? No. You're going to be a fucking retard and go vote for a third party candidate. Now, here, now here's... Here's where the gloves have to come off. If you voted for Mickey Mouse or Harambe or Jill Stein or Gary Johnson, fuck you. That's a wasted vote. That's a wasted vote. If you wanted Donald Trump to win, actually, no. If you want, yeah, actually, if you wanted him to win, vote for them. The reality is. The third party, now I realize that a lot of a lot of problems in the country are actually uh, blamed on third party voters, but this is where it actually matters. This this actually matters. Donald Trump didn't have to match your vote, okay? Your little protest vote didn't matter because he didn't have to match it. If you want to make it difficult for him to get in office, get out and vote. The only option, the only obstacle in his path was Mrs. Clinton. For as much as people hate her. That was the only option. Now, generally, I wouldn't blame something on third-party voters, but the reality is this is why you don't vote third-party. You know, when it's time for the election, you don't all of a sudden grow a conscience and say, oh, hey, I don't like the two-party system. I'm going to go vote for someone who's not going to win. They didn't get 1% of the vote. Harambe didn't even didn't register. God damn it. It, 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 it. It's like voting for Stephen Colbert. When he ran a few years ago, that was only in one state and only in about half the counties over there. You think he had a chance? No, he didn't have a chance. You wasted your vote. And now you're angry that you didn't get your way? No, no. Play the game correctly. We have four years until it's time to elect another president. It now would be the time to get a third party up and running. Now would be the time to say, we're the Harambe party, we're the snowflake party, whatever dumbass cause you want to put in front of, you know, your, your, your wasted education, your feel-goodness, whatever the fuck you want to do, 
now would be the time to do it because now it's where the danger starts. We're, you know, we're in the fun part now. It's all over with. All this angry, crying bullshit that you're doing in the streets, it's not funny. It's not amusing. And to the adults around you, those of us who realize there was a choice to be made and you have to live with the consequences because you're part of the system, even if you don't like it. I'm sorry, but you know, you know what? You know what? Fuck you. Just to pull another quote from uh, 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 George Carlin here. We may not want to go see a movie. Okay? We may not want to go even see the exact same movie. But we've all had our ticket bought for us. And we're going to go sit in the theater. And we're going to watch it. The next four years, we all get to watch this exact same thing. Whether you've got a ticket to see it or not. Okay? Not voting means you didn't get a ticket. But you know, but you know how ticket sales work because we talk about pop culture type stuff on the show all the time. That's how it works. That's how it, the ticket sales is what matters. The ticket sales. Now imagine a vote. A vote to ticket. You you know, it's a piece of paper. Whatever. God damn. He, I, I I just I'm so frustrated with people right now saying, "Well, I didn't go vote because fuck you. Just suck my dick and die." That's a little dramatic, but. If you didn't vote, then you can't really protest. You just can't. Uh, I'm sorry. You can't. Sorry, I had to pull a Marco Rubio. I had no fluid in my mouth. Wait, Marco Rubio is a human? Yes, he's even less of a robot than you are. Are we sure about that? Yes. I, I I don't think that's true. It's true. It's very true. But let's move on to, to something that's not... We, we've been like 40, 48 minutes talking about politics. Let, let's, talk, let, 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 let's talk about uh, Leonard Cohen. Sure. Can, can we just talk about Leonard Cohen for a minute? You know... Um, those of you who don't know who he is, I don't know how you don't know. In fact, I met someone the other day who had never met Leonard Cohen, even though uh, they are going to be a choir teacher, and they've been singing since they were in middle school, and they've actually sang the song Hallelujah. But they didn't know who Leonard Cohen was. I'd I'm like to surprised. add, I'd like to add, this person's a millennial. Jesus, Jesus, the millennials. Um, but no, didn't know who Leonard Cohen was. So if you don't know, look him up. He's probably one of the most influential uh, musicians and poets of the entirety, or well, um, almost of the entirety, of the 20th and a good portion so far of the 21st century. Uh, right up there with Bob Dylan, who got a, you know, you know who 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 got a uh, a uh, um. What's the prize, Nick? Um, I, I, I can't think of it. Uh, uh. Nobel Prize. Nobel Prize. That's it. Anyway. Um, won it yeah. for literature. Yeah, no, no, Nobel Prize for literature. If you want to know why Bob Dylan won, just listen to the song The Times Are a Change In, which is from nineteen sixty three, I think. Which is still I mean a song from then is still relevant about change that's going on in the world. And that's kind of what Leonard Cohen represents, is that like he was able to distill uh all of his thoughts and emotions about everything and just put it down and put it to music. And there's pretty much a Leonard Cohen song that will describe just about anything, anything at all. I mean, I mean, just pure unadulterated talent came out of this man's mind, and he's gone. He's gone. Uh, not gonna come back. I, 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 I want to say that 2016. Maybe the worst year that we've ever had. I, I, I don't know. What do you think? 
2016 has fucking sucked. It is like it has been a terrible, terrible year. I mean, I I, I don't think it's just the worst year for millennials. I think it might be literally the worst year in the past 50 or 60 years. It is. It's been a terrible... I mean, just... If you look at all of the... Just just musical talent alone who's gone this year. And and, and I mean... And more actor, than, I, I, I Yes. 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 Everyone is checking out of reality this year. Everyone is checking out. And it's sad. Have you, it's terrible. I... I, I actually have a lot of friends that are talking about preparing for the end times, which I think yes, is a little over. Yes, actually, but if, if I can if, understand, I can understand. If there ever was a moment in time where I thought that the archangels were going to descend from heaven and call us all home, it would be 2016. It really, and, and I'm a non-believer. I am a non-believer. I would believe, like, like you could tell me that Ragnarok was going to happen. I'm like, okay, I got you, buddy. I got you. Like, in, in fact, you could tell me that Back to the Future was actually written by a time traveler, and they only changed a couple of names, and this is the future where Biff Tannen now controls everything. I'd be like, okay, I got you, because the fucking Cubs won the World Series. And you have a an ego maniac. And now, now, now here's the thing. Here's the thing. The character, like this, is admission from people who wrote the movie. Biff actually is based on Donald Trump. He's actually based on 1980s Donald Trump. That's terrifying. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Are we literally in a Back to the Future movie? I think we might be. I think I I, I think they changed. You know, like like made Hill Valley, you know, be like be like an amalgamation of all, of, like, which is why in the movie you see, like, you know, it's in it's it's in the West, but it's but it definitely has this, you know, like Midwestern style set up, and they have these values like they're from the like I, I think it's an amalgamation of the United well, States, and what we it was do almost have hoverboards. We, no, we, no, we actually do cover. have hoverboards. You just can't. They don't function the same way. I mean, we we, we yeah. even had DeLoreans. You know, in fact, my uncle had one. I mean, it's, it's we we do have flying cars. They, I mean, they they're not quite the same, but I kind of think that someone came back from the future and wrote this movie. And it's like here, here, here's the cool things. I mean. Just, just think about this. Just, just think about this for a second, okay? Classic video games are making a comeback. Making a comeback now. Kids are learning to play all these baby games. You know that Elijah Wood said in the movie. You know, all these classic foods are coming back. We're getting to relive our past. It's weird. It's, 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 it's very strange. To realize that this is what's going on right now, and that maybe Back to the Future was our guide, and we didn't listen hard enough. We just watched the movie and we're like, okay, it's a movie, it's a great movie, it's a wonderful movie, and we just didn't listen, didn't listen at all. And it's kind of scary to think that's what's going on, because again, Biff Tannen is in charge. And, it, and Biff is based off of Donald Trump, and Biff is in charge. Marty, Marty, we need you. We need you, buddy. I'm, I, I, I'm waiting for someone to appear, just, just out of the, out, out of the time stream, and try to fix everything. That's what I'm waiting for now. How about red shirt guy at BlizzCon? Why not? Because okay, look, look. We totally missed BlizzCon, Nick. We're like, we, 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 that's how long we've been gone. Is we missed talking about BlizzCon, and I Red Shirt Guy Donald was there. Trump. I blame Red Donald Shirt Trump. Guy was there. Red Shirt Guy was at BlizzCon. It was amazing. Red Shirt Guy is always amazing. He is. He's amazing. He's amazing. But you know, since they've had some personnel changeovers at Blizzard, uh, you didn't have anyone go 
oh shit this year, which is kind of funny, but just, like go. Maybe they were just more prepared for him this time. I think it's you know. expected that he'll be there, and actually, I know it's expected he'll be there. But I mean, just if you want to know the unadulterated joy, this, is that the second time I've said that? Yeah, it is. Anyway, um, like the pure joy that he elicits in people. Go watch. In fact, I'm gonna put it up after we finish the show. I'm, I'm gonna put it on our Facebook page, uh, because I want everyone to hear uh what Panzer has to say about him. He's just like, oh look who it is, and it's like it 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 it, it, it just really really high-pitched and giggling. She's like, hi! You know, like like her usual overly animated animated self. And, like, that that's the joy. Like, people were standing up behind him and cheering and everything, you know. Like, in the past, they've joked the lighting was perfect because it, it looked like it was just, like, all focused on him. And it's amazing. But we missed BlizzCon. They, did, they didn't announce a new, a, new, a, new, a, new, a new fucking thing for World of Warcraft. And... I have to rant about this. I'm sorry. I, I I have to say something about this. If I don't, I will shoot myself. Blizzard, Blizzard, we love you. Stop working on Diablo. Stop working on Starcraft. Stop working on all the other things you're working on, and fix the fucking lag in World of Warcraft. Fix it. It's been going on for 16 days now. We're tired of it. Fix it. See, I don't have these problems because I just got a new shiny computer. It's shiny. It's shiny. There are people who do who have new computers as well, and they're still like it's 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 about half the player base or so that's having to deal with it. I, I, I really want to know, I, I, I mean, I imagine they'll fix it sometime soon. I know we're whining and everything, but uh, Blizzard's usually pretty good about fixing it. But see, he, here's the problem. Here's the problem. It's not on, and this has been proven, it is not on the player end. It's on Blizzard's end. Because a lot of us, myself included, have tried every workaround was just like uh, 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 clearing your DNS cache, you know, deleting the cache folder in World of Warcraft itself, uh, renaming the WTF folder, like all these little fixes that they traditionally have for all their disconnects and fuck-ups, people have been doing it, and it's still going on. It's still a problem. It's still a thing. I don't know why, but you know what? I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. It's the end. It's the twelfth anniversary of World of Warcraft this year. Uh, it's also the twentieth anniversary of uh, Diablo. Uh, it is the twenty-fifth anniversary of Blizzard. This is a good year. Like, there's some fantastic shit going on. And in fact, of course, you know, of course, today is the first uh, day of the twelfth anniversary of celebration. So log in, get your achievement, buy you a corgi. You 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 can get a puppy doggy. Now another puppy doggy. You know you need it. You gotta have it. You gotta you gotta have those battle pants. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff going on. Like it's it, it's really interesting. But yeah, new jet for Diablo three. They're actually going to be recreating uh, the original Diablo within the confines of Diablo three. So if you never played original Diablo, you get to do it now. They're they're adding stuff. I think the car to Karazhan, They're going to make um make it make it have like a heroic version. Rather than be just myth, uh, mythic, and a bunch of things are coming. It's very, very exciting. I'm uh, there. There were a couple of things I was super uh, excited for. Um, one of the things that I really noticed is they're actually moving away from their old content strategy of just releasing really big patches, and they're actually copying off of a. Final Fantasy XIV, um, and their strategy of s more constant, smaller patches um, to keep players interested, which I think really is a better model now, um, because we tend to have shorter attention spans now, we want more new things to do, 
Um, we were uh, the player base is just so much better at World of Warcraft as a whole than it used to be, and we just move through content so quickly now. So I I really like that. Um, the heroic tavern brawl in Hearthstone just released this today. I'm really terrified to try it, but I want to try it at the same time. I don't I I I don't know to, it, it's it, it's a thousand gold to do it, but the prizes you can get from it are just amazing. Um. Diablo 3 is releasing the Necromancer, which my friend is super excited for. He's going to start playing Diablo again just for Necromancer. Um, and I don't know if you watched the tournaments at BlizzCon. They, they were also a lot of fun. I watched some of them, you know, but like it's... It's a good time to play Blizzard games. It really is. I mean, there it's it's a great day to be alive. Blah, 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 whatever, fuck it. It's, no, I'm, not, I'm not gonna keep it saying. Brought it. joy in this time of darkness. That, that you know what else? Do you, like, do, do you know what else is bringing joy in the times of dark? The times Joe of dark. Biden, I mean, what's that? Joe Biden. Mean? Joe Biden. Uh, yeah, actually, Joe Biden memes are are amazing, but I mean, I I, I'm, I, I'm, I, 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 I know I know we're not supposed to talk about politics, but just I want to give just one moment to dedicate my love to Joe Biden as being the most important president ever. I mean, I'm sorry, vice president ever, just for the memes that he has created with Barack Obama, just. Thank you, Joe Biden. Thank you. I'm gonna miss them. I'm gonna miss them. I mean, like, in retrospect, out of all of the problems that I've had with Obama on policy, I mean, it's it's enough, to, you know, to turn my already white hair white. Um, I'm gonna miss him. I'm going to miss him. Because he he's been a fun president. He's been like he was what, what he was a great president. Whether you want to argue he was right or wrong, or uh, you know whether, whether you like, agree with his policies or not, he was a great president. I I was gonna say okay, think about um. When marriage equality was announced, of course, you know we did a show that afternoon. I didn't, I, I didn't know this until like a couple of days ago, but uh, Obama and Biden actually ran around the White House, like all the way around it, carrying uh, rainbow flags, and like went to like literally fucking ran the whole way around the White House and through all the rooms carrying flags. I didn't know they did that. I mean, what? How? J just why do we have uh, whatever? <sighs> anyway, but no, I, I, I I'm talking about like, I, more joy than I, that. I, I, well, I one of the weird things to me is I don't understand why people hate Obama. I get if you dislike his policies, I really get that, but I I just don't get why people hate him. I I don't. Okay, but look. I'm talking about as much joy as they had over celebrating marriage equality. Like, something that's making people that happy. I mean, it... it, it I, Ghost I, in the I'm shell! Just... God damn it. Ghost in the shell. Except there's something else beyond Ghost in the shell. But first, I, but first I'm going to talk about Ghost in the shell for a second. Now, if you didn't see the trailer... It's on our Facebook page. Go watch it. Uh, Nick, I know you and I have been very hesitant to actually have a public opinion about this yet, but I watched the trailer. I have to admit, I'm interested. I, it, and, looked, 
it, it, I'll, I'll put it like this. It looks amazing to me. I hate Scarlett Johansson's voice as the major. I'm, I'm iffy on her portraying the major, but to be honest, the major is not supposed to be an Asian woman. You know, like it's it's referenced multiple times that she's decidedly not Japanese. Now, that's fine. That's wonderful. Whatever. Um, but I happen to like Scarlett Johansson. I like her a lot. And it, 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 not and, even about Scarlett Johansson not being Asian. I just don't like her voice as the major. I I, I don't yeah, know why. It's it's kind it, of it a just, weird fit. It's kind of I I admit it's kind of a weird fit. But but the saving grace is if you have seen the original Ghost in the Shell, like the original not standalone. Uh, 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 the one, I just forgot the name. Of the sh I'm terrible. Um, that one, uh, the second movie, or the other ones that are like I'm talking about the original movie. Okay, the one that was based almost entirely on the manga. If you have seen that, that's what this movie is. This is a live action version of that. So any discrepancies that you have with standalone complex, fuck me. Uh, it, it, like it, any issues you have with uh, Ghost in the Shell, just realize. It's that movie. Go back and watch that movie, and it may sink in as to how groundbreaking this could possibly be. Possibly. Possibly. I'm not saying it will be. But, I mean, it's not like it's, I don't know, the Warcraft movie, which is not going to get a fucking Oscar nod because no one likes video game movies, even though, even though, you know, they broke tremendous, like, all the glass ceilings. Ha ha! I stole the reference. Uh, but no, like they did some amazing things for the Warcraft movie, and it's not it's, it's not like Ghost in the Shell is doing. I mean, it's it's kind of it's, it, I don't want to say it, but it's more simplistic. But watching the trailer, I grew to actually like it. I'm interested enough that I might actually see it. And as much as I have railed against live action versions of anime movies, that that should kind of tell you how interested I am in this. It it has potential. It has premise. I'm a little worried it's gonna end up like um oh god what was the movie was it Aeon Flux? Aeon Flux was fine. I I have problems with it, but I'm fine with it. Like it's it's fine. You know it's it's it, it's just another version of the character, and I'm okay with it. What what you're thinking of? is the one that I love. I love this movie. I, in fact, it is on my recommended movie list for everybody to go see Dragon Ball Z. I mean, what, 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 or whatever it was called. You need to see the Dragon Ball movie. I mean, Emmy Rossum is Bulma, and then Justin Chatwin is Goku, and then whoever that was, I think it was James Marsden that was Piccolo, you need to see it. It's 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 really really good. It's the best uh, live action an anime movie ever ever made. I mean, just you you need to see. Why? It. Why would you bring that up? Why? Why would you do this to people? You are a monster. Why would you I are suggest? Truly a no, monster. no, no. Actually, I am not a monster. The beast is a monster. Yes, the beast, because there's the unadulterated joy. That's the third time I have said unadulterated. Anyway, there's the actual joy bringer. For like for as much as I want to talk about Ghost and Shell, Beauty and Do the not Beast. Go Holy see shit. The Dragon Ball movie. Go don't see it. Go. Nick, Nick. No. Nick, Nick. Trust we're Nick, shut please, up. Shut up. Please, we're audience, talking about Beauty and the Beast. Listen to me for one time. Don't Watch it. Shut the hell up. Please. I beg of you. Just save Nick. yourself. Nick. What? Tale as old as time. Song as old as rhyme. I'm... Be I, I, our 
guest, be our guest. Come on, Nick, sing with me. Sing it with me. You know, you know you've watched the trailer for Beauty and the Beast, and we're just sitting there with, like, your jaw smashing a hole in the floor. I, I, I cried. Not, not, you know, like, no, I mean, not like normal, to, like, it was just joy. I was so happy to see this trailer, and I have talked so much shit about Disney making these movies into live action things, but I watched this, I'm like, oh my god! It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's 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 wonderful. It's like oh, I'm that and that and that and that. I'm happy. I'm very happy about Beauty and the Beast. I want to go see it. I'm really nervous about Beauty and the Beast just because Belle is my favorite Disney princess, probably, arguably. I yeah, yeah. She she. If I were to marry a Disney princess, it would probably be Belle. So this has absolutely nothing to do with who's playing Belle? I, I'm not generally a Emma Watson fan. I, I'm really what? not. I'm not. What? Yeah. She just... I, I've never been a big fan of hers. What? You... you... You you never had a crush on uh, Hermione Granger? What? I I I liked Hermione Granger. I I never had a crush on her. What? Call me a weird person. You're, you're I, I I was. I I had more of a crush on um. Harry. What's her name? No. Um. Oh God, Luna Lovegood. What? Luna. A little bit. I did have a little bit of a crush on Luna Lovegood. Uh, uh, the 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 the. the oh God, I can't. It's been so long since I read it. Um, Harry's uh, eventual wife. I don't know. I I I don't, I don't keep track of these people anymore. I, I'm gonna look it up. Ron's sister. I don't know. I I I, I don't actually keep track of it. So. Is it Jenny? Jenny. I don't know. I don't keep Jenny. track of all the characters. It, it was Jenny. Jenny. I had a crush on Jenny. That's who I had a crush on. It's interesting that, that we're talking about Harry Potter because I have just seen the latest Joe Biden meme. Uh, well, do, do you tell? There's no way that I can get this up on screen in time. Uh, but Joe Biden and Obama are sitting in the uh, uh, the Oval Office and, and Obama's got his hands up over his face, you know. And Biden says, I'm going to throw his wig in the fireplace. And Obama's like, Joe, don't. Biden says, one Horcrux down, six to go. <laughs> but we already broke his name on Hollywood Boulevard. Isn't that two Horcruxes down? That was fixed within a day. But we broke it. So we had to actually have broken the Horcrux. It was fixed so within a day. So. There's five more to go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I want to do an adventure of finding Donald Trump's Horcruxes and breaking them. I'm going on an adventure! I want that to be an actual video game or movie or show. I think that would be amazing. It would be. It would be. Can we develop that? Can a, a, sure. a audience, if you if you give us money, we'll develop that. Okay. Actually, yeah. Um, there's the number one reason right there to to uh, give us all of your money. 
we're going to develop a video game where, 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 where we try and take out Donald Trump. And or movie. The best movie. The biggest movie. The hugest movie. It will be great. It will be, be the best. We're going to have the best people working on it. Big League. Just, it will be great. It will be the best. And I know, we know people in China, and they're going to help us with the action scenes. And it will be amazing. I'm not wrong. wrong. I'm not wrong. You're wrong. You're lying. I mean, you've been doing this for how long? But you've been doing you. You have experience, but you have bad experience at this. You have bad experience. Oh, see, see, I thought that we were still um, uh, quoting Donald Trump. Are. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Um. What else do we have to talk about today, Nick? Or, or is that everything? I. I don't, I don't know. Just everything is so dark and bleak because of Donald Trump. But it, it, it's hard to. It's hard to think of other things to talk about. Um. We talked a little bit about BlizzCon, uh, some of the movies coming out. Uh, hmm. Is there anything else to talk about? Nah, yeah, actually, I think that kind of is it today. Oh, uh, alright. Alright. Maybe we can talk about how we missed our audience. Did we, we missed you guys. Wrong. We're sorry we were gone so long. <laughs> Did you just say wrong? Ah, oh, I'm sorry. Look, we've got four years to do that. May as well go ahead and get a few in before we're wrong. But you, you shouldn't use it all up now. You should spread I know, it out. I know, but you. yes, we missed all of you. I, I, I promise to uh, start kicking Nick in the ass every time he's like, oh! What is your show today? And I'll I'll make him get up and do shows. But uh, I do want to remind all of you uh, that we are still doing Anime Music Mondays on our Facebook page. Uh, it's possible, possible, uh, because I did it. I don't know, like last week, I think, when I, when when I set everything up, uh, streamed it to uh, YouTube and uh, Twitch live as well like immediately following it being on Facebook. So if you miss it on Facebook around noon or so central time, about one o'clock Eastern, somewhere around in there, um, you can probably catch it on YouTube and Twitch. Now keep in mind, uh, the only one that it, that it will stay up on is probably Twitch. I'm, I'm, I may take them down. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Uh, but it will not be, it will not remain on YouTube or Facebook. But yeah, we're still doing Anime Music Monday. Uh, 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 I forgot to load the promo for this Monday, uh, but it will be actually. You know what? Let me go ahead and add that on real fast. Nick, entertain people for like thirty seconds. Um, let's see. Um, hmm. So, does anyone see the Maryland? Georgetown game? That was really cool. Like, the dude blocked the ball at the end, and then Maryland won the game, and the coach did a dance, and people were jumping up and down. So, that was kind of nifty. And, oh, oh, keyboard and it, I put on the blue green red pattern it's it's very rainbowish and it looks really nice um 
Yeah. It it's pretty. It's pretty. John, where'd you go? I I I I don't know what to talk about anymore. I guess I could talk about the specs of my laptop. I got oh, a ten. Oh, okay, no, 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 no. See, I've got it posted now. It's fine. You can look at it and be happy. Um, that's the promo for Anime Music Monday coming up on Monday. It's a quote from an anime series, and uh, all of y'all got to figure out what it is. Now, if you know what it is, uh, please comment. In fact, we'll make it a contest. We will make it a contest. Uh, if you know what this quote is from, without having to Google or well, actually, you, you know what, tell you what, I'm, I'm a kid. Go ahead and Google if you want to. But if you know what it's from, uh, comment on our Facebook page. Let us know. And uh, the next show that we do, we will have you featured as a guest. Yay! You get to be on the show! Yay! For figuring out what the fuck we're talking about. But, um, yeah. Anime Music Monday, your hint is it's not shit loud noise, it's heavy metal. That is your only hint that you're getting for Monday. Use the hint well. Exactly. Use it very, very well. I guess, is that the end of the show? Are, are we done? Uh, yeah, so, yeah, uh, check in on Anime Music Monday, uh, on our Facebook page, it'll be on our YouTube and Twitch programs, uh, it's gonna be, it's, 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 it's really, really good music, I, I promise it is really, now, now, um, it's, it's, it's all anime music, and occasionally we're gonna have a theme day, because, like we did, uh, like, what was it, what, it, it, it wasn't this past one, Nick, it was like, what, a week or two ago, I think, when we did the Gundam one, wasn't it? Yeah, it's kind of. Yeah, uh, if, 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 occasionally there'll be a theme, and the reason we're going to pick a theme is because, you know, some series have got a lot of music, um, Gundam's one of them, like, there's 40 years of themes to pick from here, but there's also incidental music, you know, there's ones like, uh, uh, Eric 7, which has got, like, five albums worth of music for a series that's maybe... 50 episodes long, you know, there's a lot of oh. music in the series. Uh, so, okay. I, 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 I just, I, I, I just thought of something that I want to talk about before we leave the show. Okay. I, okay. I have a question for you. Okay. I have a question for you. Have you ever watched a giant fighting robot show where you watched it specifically for the story and not for the giant fighting robots? Mobile Suit Gun. Hey, Rick, I said, Big O. Gigantor. I don't know. Big O has some great fight scenes. Big O has an amazing okay. story. It's confusing well, as fuck. It is confusing as fuck well, to watch wait, Big O wait, let, the first time. Let, but let me back and rewatch it. that just a little bit more. Not only not watching it for the robot fighting scenes, but not watching it for the robot fighting scenes because you don't want to watch the robot fighting scenes. Because they're kind of bad. Well, when you say kind of bad, I'm a little confused here. Okay. I, I have found an anime where the story interests me so much that I keep watching it despite sort of hating the robot fighting scenes. Okay. It, 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 it's, it's, I have never found something like this before. Usually, if there's giant fighting robots, I'm at least excited for that or interested in that. I'm really not in this one series. I, it, it, it's the weirdest thing I've ever watched. And, and if okay. anyone's wondering what I'm talking about, it's called Kuru Mu Kuru. And it's on Netflix, and it confuses me specifically because I, I, the the robots just look lame. 
they really look lame. It, but the story is really interesting. It, it, it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. That sounds like something nine eleven to you, and I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I I I kind of want to encourage you just to watch one episode, so that uh, I I can get your opinion on it a little bit. I I I don't know. It it, it it's really weird. I I I can't stop watching it. Sure. Anyway, that's 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 gonna be it. But yeah, and music Mondays on Monday. We're gonna have theme days occasionally. Um. If you figure out what it's from, then you contact us before Monday. So you have, let's see what's today, Wednesday, you have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You know, like, like, like if you're not too busy, you know, like if you can't take some time out of your day to let us know for them before Monday, we'll have you as a guest on the show. It'll be awesome and fun. Now, if you don't know what it is and you don't want to make a guest, it's fine. Tune in on Monday and you will find out because I promise you it's going to be good. There is a uh, a lot of music to come out of the series, and it's been it's been one of the really really best things it's ever made. Now I'm 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 trying very hard not to spoil it, but if you don't know what it is already, wow, wow, it's a problem, serious problem. Did, did you just whisper the answer to everyone? No, no, I did not whisper anything to anyone, Nick. But you know exactly what it is. I'm just... I'm gonna shake my head at you. Now, like, Nick, do you not know what it is yet? I, I, I know what it is, but we just said we're having a contest for people to figure out what it is, so... Yes, okay, I, so, I so you know what it is. Yeah. I, 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 I know. Yeah, you, so. You, you, you. Yeah, so that, that, that's the contest. Figure out what it is before Monday. Figure out what it is before Monday, and, and then we're good. Okay. Well. I guess that's a show then. It is. It is. Uh, please remember to like this video, comment on it, share it, subscribe. By the way, we have a new idea we're working on. I'm going to have to talk about Nick first involved in the show, but we'll get to that. Anyway, like I said, like the video, comment on it, share it, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, like us on Facebook. Please, please visit our Patreon page. We're only asking for a dollar. Uh, yes, uh, there are, re there are uh, rewards being worked on. I promise. I know everyone else who uses Patreon has a reward system, and uh, we're going to have one eventually. It may take a while to get everything set up, but there will be one. I promise. Uh, tweet at me. Nick, you still need to give the people your Twitter address. It's fine, whatever. And oh, yeah. also, also uh, uh, subscribe to us on Twitch. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Alright, everybody. Goodbye. Yep. So we'll talk to all of you people on Friday. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and try not to go too crazy. See you then. Don't burn things. Bye, everybody.